Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Chad, and I want to thank you for joining me today on uh, the build of the Anycopter. The Anycopter is a hub assembly that allows you to build a tri, a quad, a hex, or an octocopter. It is part of the Rotor Bone series, which consists of the 13370 straight mount and the 13370 tilt mount for a tricopter. We're just going to focus on building a quad with the Anycopter frame, but we'll just go over the basics and hopefully uh, cover some of those holes and areas that you might not be clear on. So the first thing, just pull this out. This is just a template. It's not for anything other than to uh, get your, your holes drilled properly. These plates, what you do, finish popping these pieces out. Um, all the small parts, and be careful you don't get splinters. Some of the, uh, some of this can splinter a little bit. The best way to deal with that is just a little bit of sandpaper or sanding block and just take off any little pieces of wood that are sticking out. So now you have your three primary parts for the Anycopter hub. Um, all these little pieces you can just pop out and throw away. So the three pieces are, you have your top plate, your bottom plate, and your battery plate. Now the great thing is, is all these are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which side's up or down, they'll all work the same. However, you do need to pay attention to the top and bottom plate. You want them to line up, so whenever you do sandwich them, make sure they're lined up, because if you turn it 90 degrees, some of your holes will line up, but not all of them. If you bought the booms, we sell these for uh, 10 inches or about 25 centimeters. We sell these so you can just buy them and be done with them. Or you can go to the local hardware store and get half inch wood square dowels. 25 centimeters or 10 inches is a good size to start. And what you want to do is pull out your little template here. Just mark your holes right there. And those are your holes to match up with the holes on your hub. So now we have the holes marked for the uh, center hub. We need to mark the holes for your end plate, for your straight or your tilt. Now keep in mind, if you are building a tricopter, the tilt only has one screw and it's a completely different location than anything else. It's right here. So what you'll do is you'll slide it on, mark your hole, and that'll be the hole for the tilt. Now on the straight, the other thing you want to make sure, I know this sounds simple, but make sure you don't rotate your piece of wood and accidentally drill the holes on the side instead of the top. Look to see where your other ones are marked. Slide this on. Um, you only want the wood to come out to that little indent notch right there. If you go any further you might actually end up hitting your motor when you mount it. So mark each of your four pieces. You might want to check your wood before you commit to where you're drilling the holes because some of them are a little wider or taller and you want to put it in with the best fit. See what fits best if it fits better this way or this way, and then uh, that's the side that you should use. All right, now we have all our holes marked. We're gonna go out and drill the holes. Okay, so now we have all our holes drilled, and just so you guys know, we use M3 screws. The screws do not come with the Anycopter kit. The Anycopter kit is just the wood. The drill bit size that you want to use is 764. It will be tight. You don't want it to be loose. You'll actually have to screw that into the wood. So the first thing we want to do is get our hub assembly together. We'll start with the top plate. If you buy a screw pack, we include 10 of the screws, the button head, um, and those are a two millimeter size on the top. The hex is a two millimeter. The bolt itself is an actual M3. So we're going to build a quad and you know if you line up your holes this would be the obvious choice to make a quad however i like my quad to fly in an x pattern uh, which means it would go like this now the problem is the battery plate won't line up exactly you have to use diagonal holes and that's ugly so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use these holes here in an x pattern and that'll allow my battery plate to mount you know, this way while the arms are going in an X. What I'm going to do is mark these because what happens is often you, you get confused and things start rotating and get out of alignment. So I'm going to mark the holes that I'm using. What David did is he took one of these, a standard Allen key, and he uh, cut the top off with a Dremel and used that in the drill. Now if you are going to use the drill, make sure you put it on the lowest torque setting so you don't rip through it and ruin what you're doing. Whatever you do, do not over tighten these. 
These are M3 screws. I mentioned that, but they're 25 millimeter length. They will stick out a little further than probably would be optimal. But if you want, you can take your Dremel and cut those off. But what you'll notice here, I went all the way through on one of them, but the rest, I'm only getting them started into the booms. And the reason is, is because if you put them all through, it's gonna be kind of difficult to get them all lined up and on at the same time. So push that one through and then just work down the line. I, I go opposite. So go to this side. Okay, so it's still loose. We haven't put our nuts on yet. So we're just gonna, we're gonna tweak it a little bit. And then we'll put the lock nuts on. Uh, one of the motivations in designing the whole Rotor Bones series is really more of a Lego Tinker Toy kind of system. I grew up with Lincoln Logs, Legos, Tinker Toys, all of that, and Rector Set. And what I liked was being able to build whatever I wanted. And that's what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping to give you guys something that you can build a, you know, a basic quad try. Then from there you can experiment. And you know, the nice thing about like all the holes on this, it gives you a lot of mounting options. You can invent things, share it with other people. It makes it a lot of fun. You know, I really wanted to design and build something that was gonna help the uh, community work together and share ideas. So it's not just a, a kit that you buy, put together and fly, it's a kit you buy, put together and fly and then experiment. At least that's my hope for it. I've already had a lot of fun with these kits and um, I know Josh and David have had some really great ideas and we've crashed them a lot. And I, I gotta tell you, I didn't think the wood would hold up very well, but it does, it holds up really well. Once you get the arms in there, it adds a ton of strength and most of your accidents are going to be this way and it ends up breaking an arm first. So the next step is to add your landing gear motor mounts uh, which consists of just two more bolts or screws and lock nuts. So there's your motor mount and landing gear. Do that three more times and you'll have your basic airframe. We've got our quad frame all done. The next thing you wanna do is get your battery plate installed. So if you bought the quad or the tri kit, it comes with the Velcro straps. And what you do is you just feed one end up through and feed it down. Make sure they're even or however you like them placed. It's important to do this now because you can't do it after you mount the battery plate. Once you have your Velcro strips in, decide the orientation of your battery. If you want your battery, you know, front and back, or if you want it to run side to side. You're gonna take two of your screws. In the 10 pack, you'll have eight for the boom, and then you'll have two extra for the battery plate. First thing we're gonna do is get it mounted. I like to put the button head on the inside. That way, it doesn't really get in the way of it, mounting any electronics in here. Now in this particular application, the socket head's not going to work because it has to go way too far. So I'm just going to use a pair of pliers to hold the lock nut in place while I tighten it down. So now you have your battery holder in place. If you have some hardened steel cutters, you can just cut that off. But be careful, it does leave a little jagged sharp edge, so a lot of times... I just grind it down so it's not sharp. Now what I wanted to mention on the Velcro is, depending on what Velcro you put on your battery, we like the, the hard stuff, not the fuzzy stuff. We put that on our batteries. But you have the Velcro straps. One side is fuzzy, the other side is the, the harder stuff. So what you wanna do is make sure it complements the battery. That way when you put the battery in, it will stick to it and give you some added, so it doesn't slide out. All right, so now your airframe is complete. So let's pick the front. I'm, pretty certain I'm gonna make, uh, I like my battery to go front to back. And I'm just gonna pick my front, I'm gonna put a little arrow there so I know. Now like I mentioned earlier, I'm not gonna be able to go through every step. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some bits and pieces and some tips and tricks and then I'll show you on the completed one how it works and how it looks. With your controller board, I highly recommend the KK2 board from Hobby King. The reason is, is it has a screen on it. So you can see what you're doing and it makes it really easy to program and you don't have to plug it into a computer. Now it comes in this little foam case. Josh Bixler, he showed me something here. He glues the board to this top piece of foam. Make sure it's in a perfect little diamond pattern there. And you want the buttons towards the back. So what that allows you to do is you have your controller board on that piece of foam and you can just tuck it 
tuck the corners down in. And that way if you need to get in there for anything, you can get down to your power distribution or whatever, pull it out, and then just tuck it back in and it takes a matter of seconds. Uh, plus, the foam helps dampen the vibrations and movement so you don't have your board and your gyros going crazy for many vibrations. Probably one of the more difficult things is power distribution. You're going to have four speed controllers. I do recommend the multi-stars. These work really well and they're very inexpensive. I think the 15 amp uh, multi-stars are like $7 at Hobby King. What you have is this is the battery side and this is the motor side. So if you want to mount it on the arms, you won't have to do any soldering most likely if you get motors that have these bullet connectors. You'll just put the speed controller on the arm there. Make sure you know you run into your power distribution. And you want to run all your wires into that section in there. You can mount your speed controller on the bottom, the front, the back. It really doesn't matter. I usually like to mount it on the bottom. I do that because I, if you zip tie this, then the, the wires, as they move or if they're being pulled, it stresses the solder joint. So I'll just do that. If you want to put one more around the speed controller, that's fine. One solution to your power distribution are these little breakout cables. They sell these on Hobby King as well. And it allows you to go from one battery to four different speed controls make sure, make sure you don't get these backwards. Make sure red goes to red, black goes to black, because that will destroy your speed controllers if you get it backwards. In here, we chose to go with a different method. This was a power distribution board, but you can see it just has, you know, four outputs, and then it goes to a battery lead right here, which comes out the bottom. One more way, the most basic way, you can just cut these off and you'll take some silicone wire and solder one here, uh, remove some shielding, solder another there, there, and you can make a nice little ring and then connect your power to the end of it. Make sure you're using a thick enough gauge. You want to use at least the thickness of the gauge of the speed controller, maybe even thicker depending on how many amps you're pulling. Now this system is really meant for smaller motors like 370 or smaller. You probably don't want to go over like a 45 gram motor. My favorites are the Laser Toys, uh, they call them a Blue Wonder. They're I think 1300 kV and they're only 24 grams and these are amazing little motors and they're really easy to mount. If you do order these from them, make sure you order this. It's a separate piece for $2 and then the motor just slides in there and has a little set screw on the side and you tighten that down. What I like to do is I take this firewall motor mount for the Blue Wonder and you put it on there and then you can take your 6 inch zip ties and just zip tie it on. And the reason you would use zip ties is when you wreck, the zip ties will break and hopefully you won't break a shaft in your motor. Okay, so you get your, your three zip ties on there and just cut the, the ends off and make sure your motor mount is nice and sturdy. You don't have any movement there. And that'll hold really nicely. And then you can add the motor in, tighten the set screw, and there you go. Okay, another little note, the uh, Blue Wonder motors you get from Laser Toys come with these little brass bullet connectors, which one good thing is they're very lightweight. A bad thing is they're not standard, and I don't have the, the female end to fit them. If you do use them, because it does come with the female end, so you can solder those onto your speed controllers, it has a little lip right there, and it's not it's not covered by the heat shrink. So if you use these and you have three of these and they're sitting next to each other and those touch, it will burn out your speed controller. So I strongly recommend uh, putting some heat shrink over that or making sure that they're separated and they don't touch. Okay, so you get your speed controllers, your motors mounted, your controller in place. So I usually just mount the radio right here. Anywhere on the frame is fine. I'm not gonna go into all the wiring of the board and the radio and all of that. We have plenty of articles on our website. This whole system was built around eight inch props. These are the gem fan. I'm not sure how you say it. Eight inch props, they've been working really well with these motors. And make sure you balance your props because that vibration will affect your board 
and how it flies. That's pretty much all the steps that you need to get this thing built. This one's a little bit sloppy. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but we'll go outside and give it a try and, and see how it flies. Okay, I have the DX6i today. It's, it's a good radio. It's actually the one I, I started out with. Personally, I have a high-tech Aurora 9 that I love because it has telemetry and it will tell me if my battery is getting low. Um, unfortunately, the DX6 won't, um, which brings up a good point. Make sure your battery's good and make sure you're not flying until your battery's dead because what'll happen is one of your speed controllers will cut out before the others and it will cause your multi-copter to tumble and that's not good. Today I do have the GoPro on there and I'm gonna record some video footage just to see how it looks. So hit record on that, we'll get it armed. Oh, look at that, very stable. bobbling a little bit. Actually it's it's flying really nice. Seeing a little bobble in the wind. Um, probably pull our gains down a bit. And the KK2 board has a uh, stable mode, which I just kicked that on. Oh, it looks really stable. Until you get used to flying a um, multi-copter, and they do this with tellies too, you want to get used to um, flying it tail towards you, you know, until you get used to it. I am really impressed with how stable this is. It's doing really well. Also, when you're flying a quad, make sure you stay close um, until you really get used to it because you, you can lose orientation very quickly and uh, that's not good. All right, looks like everything's working and uh, I wanna thank you guys for joining me. and. What I'm gonna do is we'll have a follow-up video where we'll show how to make this little floating camera rig. It's really just made with some galvanized wire and a piece of wood and a couple zip ties and that's it. Hopefully you guys have a successful build and you have some ideas and you try some things and I want you to share it with us. We wanna see what you guys do with the Rotorbone series. Thanks for listening and I'll see you later.